Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers. I am Claudia Monlui, and today we are here to discuss the border management system which has gone live today, Monday, July 4, 2022. And with me we have a trinity of experts, if you will, in the persons of, to my immediate right, Mr. Lucius Lake. He is associated with the St. Lucia Border Management Control Agency and an immigration expert. And we have Gamma representatives here, Gamma being the parent company. And they are Desmond Nicholson and Frank Bax. Perfect. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Good by all accounts, a very significant day today. Um, Mr. Lake, of course, gushing with enthusiasm and definitely happy that we have gone live. St. Lucians have heard some hints about the ongoing project to implement a border control in St. Lucia. But then today, let us delve a little into what that entails. St. Lucia has been without a functioning border management system for some time now. With the help of the RADEX team, we have a state-of-the-art modular border management system, which means that in the in going forward, visitors and passengers who come through our ports of entry will see a quicker automated system going on where the immigration officers will not only hold the passports, but put it into a passport scanner and a screen would direct them before we go forward. But I leave that for the technical portions for Desmond and Frank to give in that regard. But it has actually increased or improved traveler efficiency in that regard. But again, Frank and, 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 and Desmond will put a little more on that. OK. Um, before we move on to them, Mr. Lake, perhaps you can take us through some of the, the high points to make today become a reality. With the help of the UK government, it was a up and down movement. COVID had a part to play. That is why we pushed, and we now live at the George F. L. Charles Airport, Rodney B. Marina, and to a certain extent, the ferry terminal in Castries. We have connectivity, we have machines, and we have officers trained, and right now, using the system to process both visitor and residents coming in. So significant is that we can now join the rest of the region to put up our hands and say we have a functioning system which will accurately record the ins and outs of all persons who tra traverse our borders through the recognized ports of entry. Okay. Of course, we don't want to go heavily technical, but we have to touch on the software which is supporting our BMS. Oh, yes. And um, you mentioned the experts already to yes. give us an idea, so you may feel free to go ahead, um, Desmond and Frank. Okay. First of all, thank you for having us. Um, today, it was a huge milestone to go live with the Radix BCMS system for St. Lucia. Um, the system is a software that is completely securing all entry points in the end for St. Lucia, for all travelers going out and inside of the, of the country. Um, it is based upon the latest, latest technologies available in today's markets, but also the hardware and the specialized equipment that is being used to, for example, authenticate the old travel documents, whether they are false or not, is taking um, work from the immigration officers that can be automated so they have more time to do the physical observation and um, of the of the travelers in front of them okay and the system um, would you say it's a it, it's a very efficient um, interface is there um, an aspect to it which is very user friendly persons are always concerned when they hear about that is there anything that the user might be able to do before actually coming into a physical airport or seaport um, as a requirement um, because there is the bms in place that is i think um, no, I need to yeah, yeah, well, referring to. the intent now because we have a functioning border management system is to go along with the online ED card solution. The online ED, the ED card presently is done its, in its present state where passengers on arrival in Central present that ED card where the immigration officers cross-check 
against their passport or whatever travel document they had and the declaration to customs. What this is intended to do is to reduce the amount of paper that is used. As compared to traveling to some of the first world countries, you will be able to go online in the not too distant future to complete your online ED card registration and customs declaration with a small health component into it. So it means paperless in capturing our visitors coming or in submission of um, visitors and residents entering to St. Lucia. Okay, and um, speaking of um, going paperless, I know that um, um, with the pandemic, we, we now have um, this new feature, which is very prominent, where persons have to get clearances for COVID, etc. Um, is there any part of the system which is going to take that into consideration? The system has a capability of working along with the recognized labs or institutions which grant or which can authenticate persons' COVID results in traveling. It will flag into the system. So the possibility does exist, but as we are dynamic and the rules are being changed or the protocols are changing every now and then when the government is satisfied that that the system has the capability of dealing with it upon request. Once the information is given in, in quick time, a solution can be brought forward to get it done. It was done in Aruba before, so it's a matter of replicating it and having it used in St. Lucia. But that can be done. Okay, it's very, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that. It coincides with one of my questions where I was asking whether um, there is a particular model that um, we have um, kind of patterned our own system after here, or was it um, you know, in some ways tailored to our own needs as a small island developing states with you know, a, a heavy, um, heavy airport um, traffic due to our tourism industry. Certainly at certain times, the, the seaports pick up as well. Um, so um, the whole system is based upon a modular approach. So for us to be able to extend the system for St. Lucia further, connecting with other authorities, building in more checks, that is all being part of the, the final um, idea where we're going to. Um, coming back to the, the, the security of it, the most important part of the border control management system is of course making your borders secure. But you also, you also want to grant a nice travel experience upon crossing the border, not waiting in line too long. Um, so when the online ID card system is in place, all the information should be um, retrieved up front, and then the processing of each traveler should be around eight to 10 seconds only, which is a large reducement of the processing time as it is now with the physical card. Okay, I think that, that is, it is <laughs> mind blowing to, to hear how quickly this system is going to facilitate passenger processing. Um, and we are taking a phased approach, Mr. Lee. So um, perhaps we can um, look at what's next after we have um, fully implemented with George F. L. Charles and um, the Rodney B. Marina. What's next? Okay, phase one: uh, George F. L. Charles, Rodney B. Marina, ferry terminal. Phase two: Hirono International Airport. Marigo Bay, Sufre, and Beaufort Seaport. So the intent is to have our five seaports and two airports fully equipped with the latest border management system. The modular approach uh, Frank spoke about means that there's interconnectivity to other entities that would require that level of information coming out. And whereas they require it, the system allows you to grant persons only read alone or not able to manipulate that information, but to use it for other purposes, like the Tourism Authority, um, the Customs and Excise, the Permit Department, uh, um, the courts. It's endless in that regard. So it, it means that proper records will be kept, proper information in a timely manner will be given out upon request by these competent authorities, or authorities which have the ability or the, the, the um, who are granted that ability to capture that information to use it for whatever purpose that is necessary. Okay, so what is the time frame to begin training for the oh, UNORA? Training has started. UNORA. From the, mm -hmm. from, the from the time the Gamma team came in, 
and the Saturday installation of the equipment. Staff in Castries, as part of the pilot phase, have received the requisite training and familiarization with the, the system. Once connectivity has been established to the level that is wanted, during the installation phase, the review for the HIA staff and the other ports will be trained. It's difficult to train persons on a live system and you don't have it actually function at that point in time. So we are working along with the local service provider to ensure connectivity. And in the next month or thereabout, while the team does a back end to fix any bugs or kinks in the system, we're going to be installing the hardware at HIA with the intent of giving staff the requisite training and introduction to the system. That is phase two. Okay. Um, uh, somebody posed a question to me in relation to this new system, and I think it is a question um, that is relevant and can be um, posed here to our group of experts. Um, having obtained clearance from um, St. Lucia, um, the individual was wondering if they're headed to another CARICOM region. Um, for example, do they need to go through clearance again um, since we're still in, in, in this um, common space? Yes. There are discussions with OECS and the other islands to have an integrated border management system. This is an opportunity to have further discussions with OECS and our other sister and brother islands where it, re where it relates to that level. During the World Cup, we had a single domestic space. The conversations are ongoing as to how we go about. But the systems have the ability, and the team can give a little more insight into that, to have interoperability or have the systems speak to each other. These are um, technological systems or computer-based systems, and that possibility does exist. Yes. OK, so perhaps um, you can elaborate and um, tell us how the systems can speak to each other. I know a number of agencies um, came on board and I'm um, directing this, of course, at Desmond and Frank. I know um, you have to, you would have had to bring in a number of other, other agencies, both locally interface with them and also internationally to ensure that um, Whatever, whatever we are doing is not happening in isolation. Mm -hmm. Want to answer? Yeah, uh, what can we say? Does, if we would look into the future and you say those islands will be interconnected by the same system, if possible, then of course it will be first security, that will be priority. So saying people are being flagged and on an island, they know outbound from, they're coming to this island, St. Lucia, so up front we would know this person will come to the island and proper action could be made to arrest these people or do other stuff that needs to be done. So the more islands are talking with the same system, the more communication can be done and that will be a benefit for all security and all the islands. Okay, well, thank you very much. Maybe uh, the, the um, members of, of the public who might, might have wanted to take a chance to present maybe forged documents might have to now think twice. Um, but Mr. Lake, we have um, a nexus, I think, with the e-passport coming on. Um, some persons are still in possession of their machine-readable passports, and in some cases it's fine to travel with your ID card. So um, how will this new BMS system um, handle the various forms of IDs um, happening simultaneously. The system is a biometric travel verification and identification. So it authenticates passports or travel documents submitted by the traveler. The system is such that it can handle our old or present machine readable passports and the upgraded e-passports, which we will be rolling out soon enough. It can also capture the information on the ID cards because where the machine readable zone is located. So persons can travel with other documents other than the ID card, other than passports or ID cards as is with the, the treaty or with the collaboration we have the OECS islands. So the possibility does exist in that regard. It means that the system is wired in such a way that the travel documents the region has agreed upon will be accepted on entry. It's just working out with, if there are any issues in that regard, 
working with the developers to ensure that whatever system is being used or border system standing presently can assist and can capture that information. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Um, may I add something yeah. to that? Because I think it's important to know that there is a complete um, docu um, database of all the documents, travel documents of the whole world in place in here. This is being regularly updated with the new passport that are coming out across the world. So all the authentication features are being stored in that database and all travel documents will be scanned upon that database to see if it's a real, legit um, travel okay. document. Thank you. This has been a, a very interesting first segment. We will take a break and we will be right back. C'est le sika oué jistoué, ve min corona, ek ika fe mouvement, ek an chai vites tan, chak kanef kakouye pou vilijans publik la, fe wolou, pale an plas publik, kon bol an me, baz, Ti boutique, change, distance social, six pieds, rodion à l'autre. Il y a trois vaitons, si vous sentez qu'il n'y a pas cordial, quarantine qu'il n'y a pas de contact et puis l'autre, en cas où tu es exposé. Si on est écouté, free one one ou bien n'importe quelle clinique qui est pour vous. Le pays a dit mis à clé, ça veut dire les supermarchés, Pharmacy, APATM, you access them avant to get to it. The clé is in place, it means that all the things are closed at 24 hours. The protocol comes out by the Bureau of Indication Santé. We all ensemble can save the corona virus. If we all can save the virus, a toutle. Together let us win this war. Say you shall be a soldier. Together we can beat this corona. Welcome back to Issues and Answers, and we are discussing the border management system, which has gone live in St. Lucia as of July 4, 2022. Mr. Lake, what about the countries that have to first apply to obtain a visa to come to St. Lucia? This system we have is built in such a way that the visa regimes of various countries are included into the system. For example, if you come in from uh, Venezuela, whose nationals need visas prior to arrival, the system would flag automatically if this passenger ends up in St. Lucia and a request for the visa when it's sent to secondary. So you'd come in, the passport would be scanned in because Venezuela is one of the countries which you require visas prior to arrival. It would direct the action taken, where you go into second stage and if the visa is present, it is scanned in from the passport and entered onto the system so the passenger can be cleared. But that information has been put in from all the necessary countries with who require visas for entry into St. Lucia. Okay, so this has been communicated to all of them? Well, they know, no, the airlines have an idea or the airlines are informed via issuance of the list of the country or the visa regime for persons who want to enter into St. Lucia. The good thing about that, this one would be done all via the border management system. So the officers would not forget or make a mistake. The system would flag the passports of those countries right away. Okay, all right. So because our system is, is um, still experiencing growth, we're still in the infancy, um, how long will our experts from Aruba stay with us and what kind of support um, will you lend? The kind of support that you're lending now and of course in the coming weeks, hopefully. So we will be staying for a few more days now. Um, but we have working very closely with GITS that is, will function as our first and second line of support and we will be in contact with them regularly. But we will also be back in um, St. Lucia as soon as possible. As soon as we can enroll the complete system to the other entry points of St. Lucia, we will be back for sure. Okay. And after that we'll be always be in contact. So right. there's a communication between us if any issues arise will be there. We're in the Caribbean, we're close by. So yes, in Aruba. We'll be here. But Going along with it, we have, um, because the system is now rolling out, 
we have that continuous contact with the Gamma team that in the event when anything goes down, we are assured that we have that telephone call where you get an answer on the other end to deal with it. Because we're dealing with real time. Now that we have gone live the 4th of July, it's live going forward. We also have the interfaces of the other um, regional law enforcement entities that in the event we have any hiccup at all, we can rely on the Gamma team in that regard. So the conversation does not end if the team is out for one or two days to get anything else done, we have the continuous contact and support from a local service provider. Sounds good to know that um, we're in good hands and we will continue to be in good hands. Um, let us look at crime. This system is going to interrupt, of course, a crime <laughs> on the high seas as well. Um, and of course, um, perhaps, offer a, a layer of, of vigilance that we did not have before, Mr. Lee? Yes, the system comes in with a mobile unit that when our marine it goes out at sea, with the requisite training of one officer assigned to them, they will be able to process or check on the status of passengers or persons who traverse the waters. It means that holistically, we can be accurate with information we, we collect from persons within our domestic space. So it's going to change around a bit what happened, whereas it was done and it was written down. With the mobile systems being deployed, we can capture accurate information, which will be uploaded even out at sea when those vessels come back into port and tied into the main system. So rather than persons using the unofficial ports of, not unofficial ports, oh, or as it said, um, because of our porous borders, use other means to come in. Once persons come through the legitimate ports of entry, that information will be captured and the system updated by the mobile units or by the ports. Okay. Um, and of course, we have um, persons who are sometimes sent down to St. Lucia by law enforcement who do not possess the, the traditional documentation, such as a passport, um, usually um, referred to as deportees. Um, is there some aspect of the new system that is going to um, process those people in, in any different way than everybody else? No, uh, well, it's like the Coast Guard module, right. what's the status? So if you find an undocumented person, then technically there's no identity yet. So there is procedure for that to put the person in the system, and then from there proceed to be able to process the system, uh, the person in the system. You can take the biometrics, so the next time the person would be sought on the street and you take the biometrics, you'll find this person in the system right away. So there's a module to put people into the system, yes. It, it's not a full deportee database, but it assists in that regard of persons. And in some instances, when we have deportees come in, as minimal as the documentation comes in, there must be assurance that the person being deported or being repatriated is St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And as I'm just not saying, the system has the capability of beating somebody out who is not a St. Lucian or you're trying to ascertain the identity, you can actually register them as a new person into the system, collecting the bit of the biometric information for storage going forward. So that possibly does exist. Okay then, so I would imagine, I would imagine that nobody's going to be left out. No. Hopefully not. <laughs> I think the, the <laughs> system, <laughs> yes, the system casts a very wide net to capture both, both persons who are law-abiding citizens and those persons who prefer to operate on the sly, shall we say. <laughs> um, um, since we're on the topic of security, law enforcement and security, um, sometimes the courts um, do give a, a, a directive on order to individuals not to travel. And um, <laughs> of course, that that is sometimes found very difficult to comply with, so those persons try to beat the system. Um, we spoke about different systems, being able to probably talk to each other, um, talk with our BMS. How will that feature in, if at all? The intent is to further this discussion 
maybe phase two or, or beyond to deal with the, the court houses. In one instance, a con conditions of bail for somebody arrested will be the surrender of the travel documents and seek leave from the court for traveling. If that information is received and entered into the system in a timely manner, it means that there will be no error by the officers at the ports of entry unless they are complicit in the person leaving, that this person will be flagged and there is serious action taken. If John Brown is not allowed to travel, conditions of his bail and he shows up at a port of departure trying to leave with an ID card or other than a travel document, the system would indicate that this was not allowed to leave and then action can be taken thereafter. Okay. But it's, it's, it, that is all into it. That is what the border management system is all about. Ensuring the safe movement of both local and foreigners in and out of our ports of entry. So we satisfy that it will be able to capture that information, providing it is given in a timely manner and entered into the system. These are some of the modular um, aspects we're speaking about, getting that not cost of access into inputting that information into the system. Okay. Wonderful. Um, whenever there's a new system put in place, especially by government, persons tend to wonder whether there is going to be a cost associated with that. In, the, in this case, is there any cost that is going to be passed on to the traveling public? No, there's no cost to, the, to anybody in that regard. Thanks to one of our friendly governments who assisted in the procurement and installation of this border management system. We had help from the UK Border Force in going through selecting the appropriate entity to carry out this process. But it will be at no cost to the people of St. Lucia. It will mean occasional licenses being paid to the relevant authorities for upkeep of portions of the, of the license to run the system, but it will not cost the traveler anything more just ensure that they are safe in their movement, that the authentication is there to assist them for safe travel, whichever way they may go by sea or by air. Okay. And as we conclude, um, let us touch briefly on monitoring, evaluation, feedback. The team should be traveling out in a couple of days' time to return, and their sole purpose will be to monitor and evaluate, fix, any issues or bugs we may have in going forward. That is ongoing. With the local service provider, we are all working together to ensure that the system delivers as is planned and we have safer borders for St. Lucia. Very well. And your uh, closing remarks um, as we conclude, um, I don't know if you wish to add anything else, Mr. Lake, except the first thing I want to say, <laughs> we have gone live. live. <laughs> so we have live with a yes. functioning border management system. Yes. I don't know if uh, uh, Frank or Desmond put anything else, but take away it from me. It has been a long journey. We are here now, and thanks to all who assisted. Um, I'm not going to call any before I miss out any name, but the number of persons who helped out in this regard. It couldn't have happened by the three of us here. The number of other persons working in the back end, the PS Home Affairs, the Minister, I mean, it's endless in that regard. Um, Sherman Emanuel, Malan Nassis, the, the GITS team, it's endless in that regard. It is persons actually showing that we can get it done, and it's all for the betterment of St. Lucia. All right, well, on that note, I want to thank everybody for participating in this discussion. Thank I you. am Claudia Monry. This has been Issues and Answers. Thank you for viewing.